Good morning everyone, 26th of December 2017, Boxing Day. Welcome to Mama's Kitchen. Welcome to Mama's little world of creating. As you can see, I've got a dummy over there. You can see the balls of wool, yarn over there. And I'm right here. Now, this is something that I have designed organically. What does that mean? It means that I see the wool. For me, this is how it works with me. I see the wool. I fall in love with the wool. I become inspired by the wool, the texture, the colours. I must have that wool because something's going to be happening with that wool. So then I find the money, I get the wool. Sometimes I'm very lucky and I can get three, three skeins of yarn for two, which makes life even better. And with this particular project, this is an earlier project. It's okay. It might need, it, if I did it again, I'd make sure I tweaked a certain little measurements and it would come out really good because the seam is there. I did not take patience on the seat on the on the on the actual length work. But it works. It works. You can wear it. It's wearable. Hello, Miss. Hello. How are you doing? So what I've done is I've been trying to finish this and I just today's the day. What we've got here. Okay, this is a project that's just near the end. And what we've got, you can see it, it's all one piece. The only place that there are seams, good morning sweetie, the only place that there are seams are basically where, it, if you think of a poncho, how it's all in one, well, I've joined the seams there, that's it. It's all one body. Okay. It's in single crochet there. Ribbed crochet there. And basket weave crochet for the main part. Now, this sleeve is more or less done. It just needs a little tweaking once this side catches up. Good morning, beloved. How are you? So I'm doing a live feed here and a feed on YouTube as well. So if you see me looking that way, I'm not ignoring anybody. But I have to concentrate on my stitches. You're welcome to get your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, your whatever it is you do and kick back and relax if there are avid crochets out there now be a good time to pick up something and do along <coughs> sorry could have been worse so i've made the buttonholes there's the buttonholes this is just a long circular needles and I've just used it to pin that together in the middle so that I can measure up good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to half it. Some people love working with patterns. I find working with other people's patterns, I don't know what happens but mm, I just can't do it. I'll just make my own as I go. I'll make it up as well. I suppose I 
see it in my mind's eye and then I bring it I bring it round to fruition so what have we got okay can you see okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this so it meets up there there's the yarn now we have to find the crochet hook this is the exciting part because now I get to show you my mixed media stash while I'm looking for the crochet hook okay and we have this is the bottom of a curtain which is going to go to use for something I'm not quite sure what but it will there you go look at that that's quality it's got that rustic feel this is over 30 years old i bought this originally from john lewis in oxford street london from their um, from their haberdashery department isn't that a wonderful word we don't say it anymore do we haberdashery oh haberdashery it sounds magical doesn't it so i'm just going to trim this away I know what I'm going to do and it will be done when the time is right so there's one piece of fabric I'm not waiting till no new year I'm getting my things done today every day now I'm going to do something I've had enough of this I wondered where that t-shirt had gone okay don't get excited a pair of matching socks that didn't get lost in the laundry basket and in the, in the washing machine. It is to celebrate, no? Another project that I'm working on. The front part. This is going to be... You know like those Chinese jackets that they wear to go in the rice fields? This is going to be classic Chinese cuts. Again, I've just cut it from freehand it, winged it. It's got the outer fabric. It's got an inner soft old blanket. And it's got this as well, which is what you call terry toweling. I don't know if you still call it terry toweling. We used to call it terry toweling back in the day. So I'm going to just fold this up. Take the pins, put them there for now, because I need to have more discipline. I need to get back to work. I need to create. Okay, Boogie, how are you, sweetie? I need to create. All my lovely people on Instagram say hello to me, because we're live on there as well. Okay, so we're going to fold that up beautifully. It seems there's a nice thing about handling fabrics and things. Okay, what do you want with this old piece of rag? This will do something at some point. Yeah. Good morning. I'm just sorting out all my fabrics. There you go. This one. Oh, look, I keep dropping them away. And there, and there. This is what you call a stitch marker. So you can put it along to count your stitches, you know, 10 stitches at a time, 20, whatever it is that you require. And when you stop, let me stick down. When you stop at a certain point, like I've stopped, I've stopped here. To stop it unraveling, you just pull the stitch through. Oh, itchy nose. You just clip it up and then your your project does not become unraveled. Such a small thing, such a simple thing, yet so useful. Okay, what else have we got? This is going to be maybe a carpet. If you see how thick the wool is, it's like rope. See that? It's like rope. 
I'm tired of talking about politics. I'm tired of all that. Yeah, I'm tired. Let other people fight those battles. I've had enough now. I just want to live and get on with my woman's work. Because I need to eat. <laughs> I need to sell my beautiful designs. So there's another one. In fact, you see, like I'll look at this now as I've taken it out. And I'll put it with this and I'll think, hmm, that can work. And then that. So it gives me ideas. Just the fact that the, these coordinate, I will put like this. Even though they're different, different, different fabric, different width, different girth. Is that the right word? What they call mixed media. And that goes in a little pile there. This I know I'm saving. It's not hoarding, it's being sensible. Because when you craft, you learn. If you weren't thrifty before, you will learn to be thrifty then. And that is given, that's a given. And another little hat that never went anywhere. Well, it's ready for whoever wants it, but I'll use that one in something else. You see, that's a um, crochet hook. But for, um, you can either do large projects, just crochet, or you can do Tunisian crochet, which we will go into in another Mother's Kitchen session. Mother's Kitchen, what are you cooking today? Crochet. We're having crochet for lunch. Look at that, isn't that beautiful colour? It's actually a grey, but I'm seeing... Mm, so that's another one. That can go in that little pile there. Oh, the goddess newt. Let's not forget the goddess newt. Isn't she fabulous? I know. Stick around. The cards will come out at some point. Lilac. We love lilac. We love all colours. Oh, look at this. Can you believe it? From the pound shop. Shiny, 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 yanny, yanny. Look at that. Even got a song out of me. I know. Just a little, little scrappy, scrappy, scrappy. But I think this is how quilting came about eventually. First, it was out of necessity. I read, for example, that... Um, you know, I like to sort of like geek out. And I read that, um, for example, when the people were migrating to the Wild West, you know, from Germany, from Europe, when the families were coming to America to start a new life, and before they even got there, they brought those big quilts with them because they knew they'd be traveling, they knew they'd be in the wilderness. These must have been rough. These can't have been city dwellers that came. I think they were probably just simple, honest people that just wanted to live their lives and just worship the way they knew how, you know? And what have we got here? We've got a lovely knot. I don't know what it is, it's so satisfying to sometimes just handling the yarn. I mean, this colour, I love this colour, I love this texture. And I still haven't found what I'm looking for. And I still haven't found what I'm looking for. There you go. Hello, Queen of Rap. I'm having a little wool session, talking about my yarns, doing my little thing. About to, I'm actually looking for the crochet hook to do the right crochet hook for this. And I can't see it anywhere. That's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that thick, chunky wool. Lovely. Lovely. Sometimes I like it when things are a little bit mixed up in my bag because it gives me ideas. Oh, look, what's this? I forgot I've just found. I know. It says, Fragment Jed to, oh, I can't, somebody's sarcophagus. Museo dell'Antichità Egizi. 
from the Archaeological Museum of there they go. Yeah. Suppose it's the daily news in it. Does anybody know what hieroglyphs actually means? I do. So you can leave a comment in the box and tell me what the meaning of hieroglyphs is. I wonder how many people will actually know the literal translation. I know. We're going to have a bit of fun. Uh, will you get a prize for the answer? No. But we'll get some good conversation started though, won't we? And it's nice because other people can learn, you know? We've got such wonderful technology where we can speak to each other across seas, across oceans, across continents. Let's use it for good things. You know, let's not be petty and argue and, you know, if somebody disagrees with somebody, let them have an intelligent debate about it. There's no need to name call. There's no need to be horrible. It's not nice. Yeah, it's not nice at all. Mm. Ah, let me just snip this. I think I might start a hat with, I don't even know. I don't really like making plans for my yarn until the crochet hook is in my hand and I haven't found my crochet hook that goes with this. I'm going to have to hunt for it. But I need to do this first because it's getting on my nerves. Mm. Can you imagine women have been dealing with fibres and fabrics for millennia? Doesn't matter which country, doesn't matter which culture, doesn't matter which age. Doesn't matter if it's before Christ, Anno Domine, in the year of our Lord, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter if it's Viking, doesn't matter if it's Hindu, doesn't matter if it's Buddhist, doesn't matter if it's Jew, doesn't matter if it's Muslim, doesn't matter if it's Christian. Seek a spinning wheel or a spinning rod is spinning. Lamb is lamb, sheep is sheep, wool is wool. <coughs> Excuse me, tickle, bit of a frog in the throat there. And man is man and woman is woman and back must be protected, bare back must be protected from the elements. So when I see things about, oh, I IQ this and I IQ that, what? Did you go to some remote village somewhere and give somebody that doesn't even speak your language an IQ test? But you asked them to put a box in order of another box or a box. It's kind of like, I have to ask questions. I'll tell you what intelligence is. Knowing how to survive off the land so you don't starve. Knowing how to weave your own clothes so you don't get cold and you can protect your body from the elements. As I'm doing now with this head scarf and this lovely little scarf there and my jumper. Because I'm at that age where you feel the cold a little bit more than the younger people. And it's okay, I'm good with that. Yeah, don't have a problem about growing old. Too many people try to stay youthful and think that plastic surgery or loads of makeup or, you know, just the, 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 the material things are going to make you look younger. If your spirit is old, you will look old no matter what age you are. For real. Okay, I'm going to leave this now. I'm going to go and make a cup of tea. And I will be back later on to continue with this chat and with my project. Because I go with the flow. I cannot force it. 
I cannot make it happen. If anybody wants to split a screen on Instagram and join in, you're welcome. And on YouTube, if you want to make a comment, please like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Hit the little notification button, the little bell, so you'll know when I've come on, whether it's live streaming or just streaming. If there's any questions that I can answer about fabrics, or if you want to put um, a topic forward, for example, like I was just talking about weaving and fabric making and what have you, you know, I suppose the anthropological, social parts of crafting, because everyone's quick to run into a craft store and say, oh, I've got a new hobby. Yeah. I'm looking at it from the organic, from the necessity. I'm tired of going to shops and having to go and try on this and try on that. I've got so much around me. Shoes I will go and get. I'm very quick about that. In, out, gone. Some things I will still buy, like little leggings and things, because they're just so much easier. They're so much practical. Just put them in under your jeans, under your skirts, whatever, just to keep warm or look good or just be comfortable around the house, whichever. So I'm not averse to going shopping. I'm not some extreme sort of like self-sufficient nut. No, I go to the supermarket and the local stores. I buy. I search for fabric, undonated fabric. I make to order. It could take six days. It could take six weeks. But when you get your item, you will be so pleased with it. And that I can assure you. The quality will be good. The stitching, the handwork, be it stitching or crochet or knitting, will be very well done. It will be finished beautifully. And it will be magical. So, see you all in a little while.